Hello and welcome to the Every Half Saturday podcast for a brand new episode this week where Rangers um, finally go top of the league uh, in the chase for the Scottish Premiership title. It was a, a massive weekend just in um, the respect of obviously the result on Saturday which then gave us a platform to then go two points clear at the top of the table now which is it's a huge, huge boost for, for what's to come. There's only 12 games obviously left in the season, but um, aye, we said it last week, this is business end of the season now. This is just get results and um, take games off game by game. And we've been doing that, to be fair, since Clement has come in. But um, aye, it's a whole different ball game now. If we are going to be top of the league, we need to stay there. And um, that's going to be the, the challenge now for these players because, I mean, the two games we've got coming up are yeah. defining, I think, for if we're ready to go and proper challenge for this title and make it ours. Um, these two next games are, are absolutely massive. But Sunday, um, with the pressure on, he going top of the table, I think um, we dealt with that pretty well. So hopefully um, the managers can instill that in everybody to just try play what I've been playing and don't let it get ahead of us. But um, aye, if you do enjoy the podcast, you could like, subscribe and share and obviously let us know your thoughts um, in the comments about yesterday's game. But we'll go on to it. Um, that's the team, obviously, that played the game. Um, but yeah, really dull 35 minutes. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, you expect a Craig Levine St. Johnson team, to, especially at home, they're kind of fighting for their lives down there as well, out with um, Ross County and Livingston at the very bottom of the table. So they need points. Um, but the, the the surface was was appalling. It was you couldn't get any anything really going on it. Players were kind of sticking in the mud and. Aye, it wasn't a great affair in the first 35 minutes. I don't think there was even a shot either way um, until the ball just kind of broke to Mohamed Diomande. Takes a brilliant touch and a great strike to get his 1-0 up. That just felt, for me, it was like just huge relief because it felt like, although this is a different Rangers team, I've seen Rangers do this where we've got the opportunity to go and yeah. win a massive game to put ourselves in front and um, we'll fail to take it. But... Aye, it was just a huge relief when Diomande um, scored that goal. Sensational goal. Um, absolutely let it fly. Um, I as you say, not really happened for the first sort of 45 for me, really, that was going on whatsoever. Only thing that was really going on, I know I keep singing it, but just letting us know even more that Scott Wright just isn't he? at the level, just isn't cut out for it. Um, surface, as you were on, just I surface wasn't the best at all, but. Overall, first half, really, it was just a strike. It was just getting the goal and going in with a 1-0 lead and then second half looking to add to it and then obviously go top. No, it was, it was exactly that. I knew we were going to get a tougher game because obviously before the result on Saturday, you're kind of, again, it's like the past two games score however many goals and you go top of the league again. But the fact that we've now got a points difference to, <clears throat> to um, aid us and that is exactly why I feel what the hysteria of scoring enough goals was just blown out of complete proportion by a lot of Rangers fans. For me, I never really worried about that. I was just like, get the win because everybody was just worrying about if we score four goals and I feel like that then does feed into the players to try and yeah. overcomplicate things and... That's why I hope we Philippe come on as a manager, obviously, and he, he handles himself really well. And even um Tavenier Wee's uh, comments after the game saying about like, the top of the league kind of situation, he says they're not kind of focused on that. There's still plenty of games to play. And I hope that is the mentality of everybody because I feel like um even though we go top of the league, I don't want people getting carried away yet. I feel like this is there's still so much much football to play and Obviously, it's great to be top of the league, but um, aye, I think there's, aye, as I say, there's football to be played. I don't really want that to feed into the players as well to try and force things to happen in games, just kind of play the, the game just, as, we, as we have done. Just continue to do what we've been been doing. And I think that's where the manager's obviously going to just keep just keep it level-headed and out. Do you know what I mean? Let's not get over the top. Obviously, we're top of the league and what have you, but... As you say, two massive games coming up against two probably the best teams in the league as well. Um, so I, as I say, just keep a level headed on it, and I think that's what's great about come on. He'll he won't let it get out of hand. He will keep it just one game at a time. As he said in his interview after the game, I'm I'm already thinking about the next game. So that's the way it is at the moment, man. No, that's that, that's exactly the way it has to be. Especially we know midweek midweek game this week. It's a full kind of week to prepare and. Um, aye, that challenge of hearts we'll speak on after we, we cover this but um, I, I thought St Johnson actually to, to be fair to them had a couple of decent opportunities where, where they could have maybe took advantage of it if they had maybe better quality um, 
obviously no shots on goal, but I feel like um, I, they definitely didn't cause us problems, but they held us at bay for quite a while. In that game, I thought um, the defensive unit was quite solid and they stayed in that structure, which was hard for us to break down because, I mean, we were going for that long ball over the top for Cortez or Wright to kind of run on to. Just nothing was sticking for it <laughs> at all and it was either offside and stuff like that. So they actually played a, a decent game plan in the first 35 minutes. It was just a bit, great bit of quality for um, Mohamed Diomandi that kind of unlocked that for us. But going through the actual the side, um, obviously start with Jack Butland. I mean, untested really for, for a large part of the game again. Borna Barisic came in to start this one. Surprising for me, but I guess... That's what Philippe Comont has been good at, just players rotating players yeah. in and out and making everybody happy in the squad, which is which is fine. But I, I st- we'll talk, we feel like a broken record every time we come on here, surely, with people watching this. But I, Borna Barisic, I think you just see the, the decline in quality for the left back area when he plays. Um, and I, that, I thought he was he was okay for what we had to do, but I still feel like, yeah, going forward, Yelmaz is, is the guy there for me. No, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the same. I, I mean, people that listen or, or watch know I'm, I'm the same. I just feel like the manager does such a great job, as you say, in making sure everyone's involved and that no one feels like they're not, not a part of the team. That's what I love about the manager. Even when Cantwell came off, you could tell he's maybe a bit frustrated. Came off, but the manager just reminding him, listen, people have to, you know, what I mean, team game. We all need to do our part to win. So, I, I think you just, you just realise that way. Come on, is it makes everyone feel a part of the team. No, and then <clears throat> the two at the back, Suter and Goldson, I thought actually had a really solid game together. Didn't obviously give too much away, won every kind of head on the box, and that's where St Johnston kind of were looking to profit was long throw-ins, corners, set pieces to kind of test us, and there was maybe one where John Lundstrom got his head on it and it kind of looked looked over the bar that was probably their closest I effort. I absolutely bricked it. I thought it was going to... Honestly, I thought... It, was <laughs> it looked like it was looking into the net, to Aye. be fair. Um, <clears throat> but I think our organisation for, for the two at the back well, was great. Considering the goal we lose the other night, um, I think the two of them had to be solid. And I thought maybe when he Suter's best games, I thought Suter was really good yesterday. Um, and Goldson hopefully can maintain that. Tavenier, obviously, two goals again. Um, puts him on 120 goals now. I think he needs one more now. I think he's equaled John Gregg's record for the club. If he scores another goal, really? he's the highest scoring defender in Rangers history, which is fucking insane Crazy. when you think about it. And Obviously, he sticks the two penalties away. The second one is such a pressure moment um, because that is what we needed the full game, really. That blanket of the two goals and just kind of take the pressure off. He dispatches a penalty well and speaking on the penalty actually how the fuck was that not given like straight away <laughs> like referee. you're screaming at the telly there thinking what the, what is the script with us yeah. referee bricked it yeah, honestly I, straight stonewall straight away I think if they, if they knew that I think he was sort of looking at the linesman as well just to help him out there but I he bricked it and then obviously goes over the VR and makes the right decision but I, it shouldn't have took that long but for a decision like that, it's a stonewall penalty. No, it's a stonewall penalty. And Tavernier puts that one away. Second one we get, it's obviously quite lucky, but it's a handball. It's the, the ball's going towards the net. It's a penalty in every sense of the word. Um, great penalty again, top into the, the top left corner. And that just sets us on our way there, 3-0. Good um, to build the goals tally up for what everybody was wanting, as I say. like To, to get the goal difference up is, is great in, in games like this. But we could have had a few more, obviously. Um, had a few you get more. Serio Dessers and Sterling at times. Silva had a good chance at the start of the half. We had chances again to, to really put the game to bed, but um, it was up to Tavenier again to obviously do that business. In the middle of the pitch, Lundstrom, I thought, again, just what you expect for Lundstrom, to be honest, just solid. Diomandi was probably the pick out of everybody's game. Um, getting his first start in the SPL. Um and I just the goal was obviously brilliant, but I think he's just all round play. Just every kind of moment he gets quality. in the pitch, he's got quality. I you can just see the quality of him straight away, and you can it's, it makes me smile inside to know that we do have an actual quality player that we will probably sell on for a decent fee. Um, but wow, well, he's here. Let's, let's hope he's scoring goals like he is, man. That was sensational strike, as I say. Um, and I more of many. Aye, Dio Mandy, hopefully going to build oh. up to. 
to be a permanent starter on this team. Um, he's, he's took his chance and he's took it really well so far. So, aye, looking forward to seeing more yeah, of him. Yeah. Oscar Cortez was a wee bit quiet on the left-hand side, I thought. Didn't really have too much joy against, obviously, their defenders, but neither did Scott Wright. But Scott Wright does the, the different thing for Oscar Cortez is where he just gives the ball away all the time. He just shits himself when he gets in front of goal and... Nah, the fact that we're still still starting this guy is just pains me because uh, you know watching that game, you know even when the team sheet comes out, he's getting subbed at half time. It happens every single time. I just I don't know why he's as I say still here. I what as I say if you you can't like, turn up and play against you know what I mean a struggling Sir Johnston side and then as I say last the cup game as well. You know what I mean? I've watched him and I'm like you you don't even show any quality, mate. I just I just don't understand why he's still here. Um, as you say. Comes off half time, and I say it again, man. My man came on, changed the game. I thought the the gouge, I thought uh, Sterling came on and just changed the game completely. Um, I love Sterling, um, but I right just yet again just showing probably why is he still here? I just don't say yeah, this. The, the homegrown quota has been very kind to Scott Wright because if we didn't need Scottish uh, players, he wouldn't be here. <laughs> that's he that's where it is with Scott Wright. Man. Um, um, aye. aye, on the middle of the park as well. I was going to say as well, it's. Quite weird just to watch uh, Raskin just sit there and obviously no no come on or what have you just sitting there. It's quite weird obviously how desperate we were for him to come back for injury and what have you and now probably seems like he can't even really get in the team, can he really get a game? This when you think about obviously these big games that are coming up, there'll still be obviously moments for Raskin to come on to the pitch and play, but for me personally, I'm looking at playing Lundstrom, Diamande, Jack, Sterling, Lawrence all over Raskin at the moment. Um and that's again no fault out of anybody. I just feel like all those players are playing better at the moment. Um, I still feel like there's there's opportunities for Raskin to play at some points, but I don't see him starting too many games actually. Um, at the moment, it's, just, it's crazy. It's crazy season. to say because he was like the mainstay in that team we talked yeah, about last season. That's what I'm on about. It's just the thing. But on the way back to my boy Stalin, as I say, mate, I thought he came on, changed the game. Don't know about you, but for me, game changer. Well, you look at it. He's not again. He's not a right winger, and he's better than Scott Wright in his own position. It's just we've got a really just a useful player. Dujon Sterling is going to be the unsung hero of this season if it goes the way we want to be, because he's came in at really important moments and changed games, held games together, played out his skin, and for the penalty on his own. I mean, he wins the ball back so aggressively, hunts it down, chases it down, and wins a penalty. I mean, that's absolutely brilliant commitment to the the task and. Um, I think a lot of people are finally seeing um, aye, Dujon Stellings can play anywhere. <laughs> played right wing, he played left wing against St Martin. He uh, could be playing him up top soon if any injuries happen. Mm. You're playing him obviously in midfield. He's played it right back. The kind of guys that Clement wants to have in his uh, squad, I think, is, it epitomises with Dujon Sterling. Um, a guy that will just not complain about playing it anywhere. He's just happy to be on the pitch and do the job for the team and that, that feeds to us as fans because I just see him enjoying his football and I see him putting in the graft anywhere and I'm just I, in love with the guy and it feels like we need to find a, a position to play him because he's too good not to be playing. It's like He comes on a bit on off the bench. He started he's, he, quite a large majority of games, but you think, you know, where, where are we playing Dujon Sterling for the get-go? Um, obviously, I think coming up to that Kelly game, I would be having him in Lundstrom in midfield. But um, uh, there's obviously different skill sets now for different games, and that's what it's kind of all about. But Todd Cantwell, again, I thought he was okay yesterday. Maybe didn't have his best game in an attacking sense, but he's definitely got so much better in the past couple of months than, than we've ever seen. Todd Cantwell, he's playing really well. He's He buys fouls all the time. He gets us up the pitch. He's got creativity. And I, for me, um, hopefully he's not injured or anything, but... No, hopefully not, but I just thought the surface kind of affected his game, didn't really get to do what he usually does, you say, stepped it up, which is what we, we want to see for him. Um, as you say, we know got a top player there, so seeing him step up his level now is it's great. Um, but as I say, I just think he's playing surface. Just really nah, definitely kind of limited what we could do yesterday as a, as a team, really. Um, second half, obviously, we came out more, kind of, the game was open then, St Johnston, there's no point in them sitting in, they need to kind of come at you and, and try and get something out of the game, but that benefited us a lot more. Um, 
in that sense. And Fabio Silva, as I say, was the first to get that chance. He was really unlucky that the goalkeeper just got his fingertips to that one in the bottom corner. But um, I thought I had a couple of decent chances. What I like for Fabio Silva is just his work rate for the team. He tries to show for the ball as much as possible. Although, again, he might not get too many shots off or, or stuff like that. I still think he's a really kind of useful player to have up there. Because then you can compare and contrast with Cyril Dessers. I think Dessers gets in the positions and is like, you're, how are you not scoring all these chances that I think Fabio Silva would? But Fabio Silva maybe struggles to get into these positions that Dessers does. It's mm. it's difficult um, it's with, a, the, with the two of them at the moment. Uh, it's a weird, as I said, it's a weird situation where, <clears throat> I, you need, as I said to you before, you need an absolute goal scorer, an absolute finisher. Um, I just kind of get over the chances Dessers missed. I mean, it's... You you want to root for the guy, do you know what I mean? And then, then he, it's just the chances he's missing, man. I'm like, come on, mate. And you're like, you you're a forward here. I need you to, you know what I mean? Score like a forward. Um, but uh, you it's know he's going to stick. It's just brain farts with with Cyril Dessers. I mean, mm -hmm. like you look, he does so well initially all the time. He win the ball back and get himself into a position where right he's going to score. Finish. <laughs> it's crazy he does have a night but the finish do you know what I mean and it's but then why why is he dwindling so much on the thought of it you're a striker just shoot at the first see if you've got an opportunity to go instinct. his natural instincts to take the kind of easy option and go try to go around the goalkeeper there's no thought between or there might be a couple of defenders chasing me back here I need to get this shot off it's uh, he's really uh, as I say the other night he was brilliant in terms of his couple of goals he should have scored so many more than he did but you could let that go because he scored two. I just, he, he's so frustrating. I don't think we'll ever see a player like my Rangers ever because he's, I, 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 I don't even have words to describe him. But he had another one, kind of the, the same thing, wins the ball back, through on goal, takes far too long to get a shot off again, hits the bar even as well, and, between, and amongst that kind of penalty that happened for the third goal. But uh, it's, it's, it's just still does kind of, put a bit of fear into me that we've not got that striker who's decisive um, when it when it really matters. Um, that's maybe my kind of takeaway for this game, but I think we've got goals obviously coming for other places. Still goals. Still goals in the team, but it is just you do want to have your front man being the man that is scoring the most goals and also you no know, dally dallying on the ball, thinking he's got all the time in the world. Um, I just... Yeah, it just it frustrates me, man. I just see watching him do the exact same thing that he done against Celtic. It's uh, just it's... like, how have you not learned for that situation to just get the shot off? Like, aye, it blows my absolute mind. We said he'll des us at the moment, but I still, I would probably expect him to start against Hearts and score. That's the kind of player That's he is. Crazy, I know. I know, and you'd expect him to score like an outrageous goal or something, you know what I mean? But just when it comes to, as I say, doing this, it's just, I don't know, man. It's crazy, man. I think he's going to probably end up with it, what? over what 20 goals or something by the end of the season or something you know what I mean like, he's, he's, he's on track probably to get that I think he's got 13 goals already so I mean overall you're looking at <clears throat> potentially a successful season still for him but then you're thinking back to these chances and you're like you know what I mean nah, how crazy. many more could he really have had but I think that's obviously something to look forward to in, in the Hearts game it's just why we need to really take our chances because going into this one obviously the last time um, at Ibrox it was a tough game um, Hearts uh, scored very early on through Lon Shankland obviously and we had to fight our way back into the game it was two really last minute goals from I think it was Tavernier when Danilo or was, Danilo I can't even remember who it was it was Danilo definitely for the second one um, that was obviously the, mo the most important of the day it got us a huge win I feel that like, um, that was kind of the first time Clement was really under pressure at home to to deliver a result in the league, but um, Hearts since then as well have have went on to do remarkable things. Um, obviously, we we played them twice since uh, we played them in the cup and beat them. We beat them at Tyne Castle as well, but that was quite a, a tight game. Uh, decided on one goal again, and they've went on to a run of form now. That's just brilliant because in between all those games that we played them in, I felt like Naismith was maybe under a bit of pressure to kind of deliver and aye, what, what he's done is kind of similar to come on. He's just won games kind of all the time. Um, and this will be an absolute tough, like, it'll be so tough. Um, Hearts are really well drilled. They've got um, the most informed striker in the country playing with them. Um, and they're, they're <clears> picking up points all the time. So it's going to be a really, really tough, tough game to get this one over the line. But three o'clock Saturday at Ibrox, I'm hoping that the, they're just up for 
ever and again. Everything from everyone seems to be the slogan that Rangers are really putting out there. Um, and I hope it's the exact same every single game we need to play now because I, I've got the fear, to be honest with you, every game now, <laughs> um, and especially against Hearts. I know against Hearts, <laughs> kind of historically we've done well, um, regardless of the kind of form we've been in, but um, I still think this will present a lot of, of challenges for us, this team. And if we get over the line in this one, I feel like that's just a huge step to, to where we need to be because if we win this game, Celtic don't play it Sunday and we can go five clear. That's the, the pressure that's on them now then to deliver on the Sunday. That's what we need to do. And that's what they've done to us so many years. They won the Saturday game and we failed to do anything on the Sunday. Now yeah. we're in that position to really put pressure on and... um. Celtic are a, a team that aren't in confidence at the moment, so any bit of pressure that they can be put under, we need to be able to do that. But the team that I'm thinking for this one, I think it will stay kind of the same. I think there'll be a couple of rotations again. I think Yelmaz will come back into the team. I think Diomandi and Lundstrom deserve probably to start again in midfield. McCausland, I was expected to come back in, but I wouldn't be surprised if he opts for Dujon Sterling at right wing again. Um, I think maybe the only thing with Sterling is he might get into positions where... You would maybe prefer somebody like McCausland to be in, um, or yeah, an out and out kind of attacker. Um, Cortez obviously I expect him to play. Um, we Matondo being out, can't well. Hopefully he's going to be all right for no injury, and then I think Serio Dessels will come back and he'll start the game. <laughs> um, it's a it's a huge huge game next week. That's a massive game. Um, I definitely think McCausland has got to start for me. Um, I'd, I'd probably put uh, Sterling up front. Really, to be fair, he can play anywhere. No, well, why? You know what I mean? Pop a couple of goals in. Yelmaz, I feel like, can come back in, obviously. Um, I wouldn't be hanging with if uh, Lawrence came back in either. It wouldn't bother me at all as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a massive game, mate. It's just, as I say, yet again, another game where, you know, the manager will just keep it nice and thing. All we need to do is just win. Just keep winning. Don't focus on the other other side. Just focus on ourselves and keep winning. Um, and, well, as you say, difficult game. They've got the most informed striker in the country, which is... Uh, which is still <clears throat> one that annoys us, but we have to obviously just turn up and do the business and hopefully we do, mate. No, it's exactly that. It. It's just continuing on through where we've went. We now can't let our kind of heads dwindle in the, and the that's, thoughts of that. That's saying it's already, as I say, like, don't don't think it's done yet, man. Do you know what I mean? There's still so, as we're saying, there's still so much football <laughs> to be played and you just need to just, just take it one game at a time and I do think the manager will hopefully keep the players, you mm. know what I mean, in that mindset. I just, as fans, I obviously sing, do what we want, man, but it just, there's so much football still to be played, you know what I mean? You still get the cup, you still got European football as well, so there still is a lot of, as I keep saying, a lot of football still to be played. No, nah, no, that's exactly it, and that's probably where we, we'll need to end it, because there's a lot of football to be played. Obviously, it's brilliant to be at the top of the league now, it's brilliant to take advantage of, an opportunity that was presented to us, but nah, we need to keep carrying this on now because, as you say, 12 massive games now left in this league title uh, chase for us to really stamp down um, why we deserve to win this league because, again, it's still it's still fresh in everybody's mind that the fact that this is even a, a reality wow. at the moment because we were absolutely we were, we were done for a couple of months we of this done. season. You know what I mean, I, I'll, I came, I don't know if I did, I can't even remember if I did come on the podcast and say we were, we were potentially going to win all three trophies, but uh, obviously where we, we ended up, I thought you'd be lucky to walk away with one, and where we are now, it's just incredible. So, honestly, the job that Clement's done is sensational, man. No, and I think it just kind of clearly shows you again the, the man management that he has as a, as yeah. a gaffer, the... The small things like pulling the player to the side when he comes off and just whispering in his ear and just that sense of I care about every single player, unlike our former manager who was totally dismissive of a Sunderland player. I feel like uh, that it shows yeah. for when we played then. It felt like we were playing like 11 players who didn't know each other. Now I feel like anybody who plays in this team, it feels like everybody's united, even with, with Dio Mandy's goal, like the celebration for that goal. Everybody around them just mm. buzzing for him to get the goal and obviously buzzing to get that, that opener in that game. And I just feel like the, the players are so together with everything that's that's happening. And he's built a really good, strong dressing room here that I feel um, he's going the right way, obviously. Yeah, it's, it definitely is going the right way, mate. And long may it continue. Yeah. Um, another manager I'd like to 
just talk about Livy getting the wee win there. You said to me you don't think the way they'll stay in the league. I'm telling you right now, Livingston are gonna they're gonna fight scrape and crawl. They're getting out of that. They're staying in. I'm telling you. Well, that's something I didn't really expect. Obviously, for the weekend's games, um, Aberdeen Hibs. I, th- I felt that that was going to be a draw, just kind of off the base. I think the two teams are so level at the moment that it'd be hard to kind of separate them. But Levy beating St Mirren, I think, was I. St Mirren's decline since the start of the season has been kind of. Um, I uh, they started the game really the season really well and they've just picked up little points uh, kind of recently where they probably should have and against Livingston obviously um, getting that win but that's kind of where St Johnston are as well I think St Johnston Ross County Livingston at the moment if I had to pick I think I Ross did. County finished bottom um, if I'm I honest I, um, I think Livingston can maybe get out of it and I'm get in the playoffs but that, that cup game was massive for them and all that, that showed them they have the spirit to, to keep going and staying I just think they're going to stay up I've seen the other teams that are down there with them, and I'm just like, there's no. Oh, so you got the championship teams as well, but I'm just hoping out hope for them. Do you know what I mean? Man's been complaining about having no striker all season. I don't know, mate. Yeah, I think you might might do it, might keep them up. Nah, but it was also it was an interesting weekend again, and just the the whole league aspect to the Scottish football, and it's just uh, it's interesting to see what obviously happens by the end of the season. But we've got two of the the biggest games coming up now. We've got. Kelly and Hearts, but I let's hopefully dispatch your Hearts and kind of get on our way and um I really make this kind of a reality now. But and um, that was all for the episode. If you could do obviously enjoy the podcast, uh, please like, subscribe, and share. And we'll be back next week covering the Europa League draw. Obviously, it will happen on Friday. We'll be able to talk about that next week and obviously cover the Hearts game and then I previewing Kilmarnock after that. So we'll see you then. <laughs>